at times it is difficult. But anyway, good evening, everyone. Nakaribuni sana, of course, to this amazing evening conversation that we host here once in a while. I know it has been a while, but here we are, the second day of June. Generally, for Madaraka Day, of course, great speeches from our leaders. But um, something that Nibamba sana about yesterday's speeches and how Kenyans can just be creative. There's a name that was trending on Twitter, Nathan Mutukufu Lies. L-I-E-S. <laughs> At first, I thought that any mutu wa meshira mutukufu rice ikakua lies. Kumbe ni lies ile any analytical mawongo. Then a certain number die. Today in the morning, I was pulling a certain radio show. It was a mom. Guess how Ruto is now leading on stories. I jabba. I'm doing the same. Because, I mean, people have been talking about the issue of gas. Oh, it's Jay promise this guy. And you know, some things, sometimes it's not at CC. Certain when I'm doing this story, at first I used to think that it was a lie. Unapuja kusikia vile story na twistiwa. Now, tumesikia uh, story electric bikes in Apuja by July. The July month September. September. What when do you want to do? I want to do the ambiwa. I want to do the petrol. I want to do bikes in electric. Zote. <laughs> But anyway, Karibu ni sana bana. Mmekuaje? My name is Okoto Pondo kwa watu wetu interact before. Odugo, karibu sana. Thank you very much. Hmm. Yes, uh, my name is Okoto Odugo joining you from Nilemoni kule ulimeza jwala, ukikula unoni. Uyo, uyo ametumwa. Wewe umetumwa sio nani? Yeah, I'm doing well. Too much of my enemies. <laughs> my enemies are angels, and I'm going to come on, but I'm going to come on. Yeah, yeah, because I'm going to come on. 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 But anyway, karibu ni sana Paul Kitui, mambo. Ya yeah, poa poa. Ah uh, tuko poa. Nimekuwa mm-hmm. jibani. Kasukuma tu tuko poa. Mhm. Yeah. Usha taksiwa, usha taksiwa wa Wi-Fi ama ni nini? Ha. Mbona? Tuna siji mimi ndo na struggle kukuona hapa kwa screen vile una nini ama? Can you? Am I am I visible? Niko sawa? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, Nico too. Uh, mm-hmm. if, if all fails, we won't lose Wi-Fi. Because you know, you know, we'd rather stay hungry, but Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a bit more. Yeah. Kila mtu wakingia kila pahali, adi kwa bank. Nisari na password. Anything to me, Haswad. Kimba, you can't do Mambo? Asante. Niko poa, niko poa. Yeah. That's too short. Come on, you Well, you just straight to the question from the project. Kuta, 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 kuta. We rarely do this kind of live sessions because we don't want to do this. We don't want to do this. But whenever there are these interesting topics that come up, these topics are going to be able to deal with this. So the question on... Um, what is it about this finance bill 2023? I mean, this is what we need. We need to do what we need. We need to do what we need. We need to do what we need. I think it's an amendment to the Finance Act. Uh, to mm-hmm. the Finance Act, the Finance Bill is actually an amendment bill. And mm-hmm. that's making several changes to the Finance Act. I know changes to Salah on a grapple with. Uh, a major one being the 3% housing levy. You know, we only may capture the attention of many Kenyans. But mm-hmm. it's very extensive. It's very extensive. I think the, the document is about 150 or 160 pages. So there's a lot to it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Paul, where you can tell me what you want to do, and you want to do what you want to do, and you uh, okay, so a, a, a finance bill is a piece of legislation, just like any other. Uh, the only difference in this context is the impact. 
Si Omukoba mm-hmm. has talked about an act. So it's an amendment to the act. So what you have every year, so a budget is read, and then we get to see a finance bill. And then the finance bill introduces changes to the tax laws that we have. So some of these changes are what you can hear right now in housing, in like money lending, in banks. So I guess this year it's been pretty uh, impactful. It might be a culmination of so many things frustrating Kenyans. But that's typically what happens. Yeah, it's just that this year, I guess it's come with a storm. Maybe it's because of the change of administration maybe it's because of global inflation but yeah it remains to be discussed yeah mm-hmm. Kimberly, where you know? mm-hmm. um the same thing omukoko has said it's just something that has come up and like Ken- as kenyans who are not as keen before to follow up on this um, amendments of the sort so Right now is when one thing is pointed out and all of us are interested now. And we're acting as if this thing has never happened. The same way Paul has said, it's actually mm-hmm. it happened. So that this time, mm-hmm. they really cut deep to Kenyan's mm-hmm. pocket. So it's raising concern. Mm. Okay. Oduho. Oduho, is it siku zote bana? How comes 2023 in the we are even now getting interested? Personally, for the first time now, we are having a conversation about it. What is it about this thing that in a in a poor, very serious conversation here? Unmute. I'm with a taxi. <laughs> My apologies. Yeah, we <laughs> not not poor <laughs> that uh, right now we're no longer dealing about we're no longer dealing with policy. This is an issue of governance, and uh, and uh, and this is an attempt by the Kenya Kwanza government to to manage the affairs of the country. Um, and of course, it is an issue of whether one may be uh, okay with it, but at the same time, there are issues that must be uh, that must be addressed. There is the issue of the maintaining of the balance of payment, which is an issue that can uh, not be understated. The government must meet its financial obligations, failure to which will mean that we have more problems than we think are going to be brought about by these amendments. Um, and, and, and that is ultimately important for every government to be able to pay its bills. And right now it is an attempt by government to pay its bills. And uh, right now, uh, but at the same time, it is also important to mention that there are certain stringent measures that the IMF puts on every government whenever the government is, uh, is facing balance of payments problem. And to a great extent, which this may not necessarily have been made public, we should also ask ourselves, to what extent does the IMF, uh, what role does the IMF play in the amendments that we see today? Mm-hmm. Okay. Very well. I think with that said, now here we are because, um, uh, but even before maybe getting to another question that I pull it up with you, Steve, all these years, my friend, to make our easy videos in Mekonga, Mbona this year 2023 in the Meshika had to the I think it's because it's very extensive. A lot of things are also new. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other things have been tried before, like trying to add the VAT on petroleum products from mm-hmm. 8% to 16%. That was something, a recommendation that has been made by the IMF to the country. Mm-hmm. And it was tried in 2013, we were protest. It was postponed and postponed, and Uhuru Kenyatta tried it as well. We were a protest. You come on, Nakumbuka, we were a severe shortage of oil now. Motorists were going to protest all over. And so, Uhuru shied away from that. Uh, but I think this time Ruto is trying to do it again. Uh, and we will see whether this is successful this time. But the fact that he really going to be to Mingi Sana and the fact that uh, it has created some sort of political uh, sentiment around it and the opposition has been very active in aiming at the bill and the time at which it comes. So he took on a very high rates of inflation. Kenya on Aliyah Sana. Uh, so any addition of taxes becomes a very sensitive topic. And I think that's why it's gaining the traction it has. Okay. Gilbert Karibu, sana mambo. 
Wewe bwana wacha hizi tunatumia hebu toa hizo earphone uongee direct. Awe wacha bwana. Wewe sauti yako ni kama imechukua hebu wako na that kidogo alafu urudi tu kusikia poa sauti iko chini kabisa. But anyway just to take us quick through certain things pia mimi niko nimepitia pitia najua pia tukikuja kwa hizi kuna lazima pia tujue tunaongelea nini so i just looked at some of the things that mimi even as a young kenyan that may interest me na there quite a number of things hapa hivi niko nimesema nataka tu like kuja tupitie pitia hapa hivi kidogo na nyinyi sije kama pia hivi ni pia nyinyi mmesoma so number one ile there is uh, something like a 3% turnover tax on a hustler businesses now what this simply means is that um businesses with the kenya shillings let's say 1370 sales per day you will start paying about 15000 shillings per year and uh, you should also remember you kama mnajua sasa hizi pia wameintroduce ile kitu inaitwa the quarterly return unajua kenyans we are used to ile returns ya yeah, at the end of the year sasa kuna ile sasa unafanya first quarter second quarter i think if you are watching this na hujafanya quarter quarter 1 ya this year so apart from music quarter quarter ni unafanya but then tuna sasa ile annual ile mara moja then there's the 3% housing levy which everyone is talking about the additional deduction from employee salaries um now to cater for you mambo yao mambo ya ofisi mambo yao mambo yetu ya housing you are told it is our thing tunataka kujengewa manyumba tax dispute appeals 20% deposit on a principal amount in dispute of tax before appealing to the high court yeah now this is also part of that bill we are talking of 15% with the holding tax on who on social media influencers and content creators happened is that you need to use work up this and at least the ngimbili ya youtube but you know what that is hey so is bora 23 youtube now say my hello guys welcome to my youtube channel today i'm going to teach you how to boil water pop serikali chef kujia wewe wapi yangu kuna sasa the fuel and petroleum products increasing vat on fuel you know definitely what this and that thing umkoko hata mitaja hii uh, there's the 10% exercise duty on imported cellular phone now this simply means there's definitely going to be a certain percentage let me say maybe just something like you 10% increase on the purchase on uh, cost of the mobile phones talk of kitu kama tena pia exercise duty on mobile money transaction it is again also it is also being for people increased to another 15% If you live in this country you know what mobile money really is when it means says mkoko says anambia amekuwa mapahale ni to send mia pale na ni pale and remember ile time kama ile time ya covid vile walikuwa wamekuja wakatoa ile kutuma 1000 ile kuonga easy kabisa ile kwa i think was it free 1000 bu yeah so now think of sasa vitu kama hizi zote sasa now this increase and the kenyans are people doing kenyans ni hustlers people are doing business as a way to see okay is the only place you meet someone in town Unamwambia bro hiki yetu yako ni kale na kuuliza nikuuzie na hata kuuzie na atembea naende home <laughs> aircraft and choppers hao sasa ni kwa wadosi ya kina Kimberly na Gilbert hizo tumewaachia there is 16% VAT on choppers and aircraft scrap to help you people at this now you can buy wametoa hiyo CEO yake yako kwa VAT percentage so now you people can buy aircraft and choppers vile mnataka there is uh, an agricultural product uh, on agricultural product bill 6 uh, to reclassify agricultural products thereby definitely you know what this is going to do increasing cost of agricultural inputs and you all know what we're talking about 5% exercise duty sign you to on human hair wigs false beards eyebrows eyelashes and artificial nails mnafanyia warembo nini yani mnataka warembo waende wapi sasa watu wa false artificial nails taxes ndio hizo eyelashes eyebrows false beards wigs uh, human hair hizo vitu zote zinaenda kutaxiwa sasa ile proper 20% exercise duty on loans from digital lenders then there's motor vehicle advance tax increased that is 2400 to 5000 on passenger vehicles and uh, 3000 5000 on commercial uh, vehicles then there's the 16 VAT 16% VAT on insurance compensation the tax will reduce the amount of money policy holders receive as compensation from insurance companies uh, then now ara kitu inashangaza sana there's also tax on baby formula so watu wenyewe mmekuwa na watoto ama younger people nini unajua hii mambo ya 
mazi wa watu wengi nini hizi chakula za watoto na again pia imekuja kuguzwa kwa kidogo mimi ile watu watu online wakasema zakayo aguze kila kitu but asiguze salama na trust you know what i'm talking about hapo zakayo akiguza tutakuwa tumekosana odu so that is just like but a brief of what mimi nilipata hapo juu 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 ukoko hiki tu kuelewa aje i think you've covered almost everything i think the controversy is not in understanding the bill but mm-hmm. in executing the bill and whether the people like the bill uh connect mm-hmm. to which i mentioned and the efficacy of these measures that are being taken by the government and other yes. uh, controversies that people may raise like ni kuna mmoja naona uja charge uh watu wana earn pesa mingi i think about 500,000 will now have their vat increased from 30% to 35% uh which is not as big honestly because ni kwa naangalia juzi if you have 2 million in kenya or at least $20,000 to say so uh you're among the 1% in this country so rona bill kama hiyo much as uh, it might seem as a progressive tax at the end of the day see what we enjoy are above that amount so you know kitu moja ndio na nilipata but uh, how to mention then there's also taxes on imports uh, mm-hmm. and i think if you're importing uh, raw materials that should that remains at 0% but if you're importing intermediate goods that should be at 10% if i'm not wrong uh, and if you are importing finished products 25% now here i think would be very hard for the government to implement because the government will have to now go through every import the tax man atakuwa anahakisha kwamba every import just to be sure whether it's uh, intermediate goods raw materials or finished goods and this might also hit our to any small businesses because small businesses will not uh, import manufacturing goods or raw materials or intermediate goods they likely uh, import finished products and so hiyo ndio kitu kingine ni muona biashara ya mahasla pia itaguzwa sana Mhm. Okay. Yeah. Uh do you want to say something? Uh no no I believe uh um koko koko was interested. Uh, I, I, I believe it is also important to uh kuelewa exactly who is affected by finance. So it mostly affects uh, those people who are struggling with the house the jungle. Okay, let me uh, go, go. Move on to the next person. Let me. No, we are ready. We are ready. Okay. 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 And uh, and of course uh, after mentioning all of them it is about understanding now what are the most pressing uh, issues and, uh, and and I mean uh, the experts have gotten into the, uh, have gotten into the issue the problem the, the genuine problem here is trying to bring uh, all these changes all at once if they were brought pole pole then it would have been uh, easier and easier burden to deal with because apart from all of this there is now the what is known as the hidden tax which is inflation you see and uh, and hopefully maybe we can we can find some time to discuss it here but also inflation is ultimately what increases the prices of goods and services while inflation is high it is unwise therefore to go ahead and especially kitu kama ya mafuta increasing vat from 8% to 15% this will translate into the rising of prices of goods and services across the board because ultimately uh, it is about how these goods are transported to the final consumer and if the cost of transportation goes up then the cost of that product or service delivery will also go up and so it is a matter of uh, uh, just un- being able to understand uh, how this affects one in the household and even in and even in regards to business businesses have uh, amendments that are mostly benefiting uh, that are mostly benefiting uh because we see if we, if we look at something like the turnover tax that has been increased from 1% to 3% it is actually being returned to where it was because it had been reduced to 1% during uh, as a as one of the relief measures ya ya gava during the covid time and so while there are many negative amendments uh, or rather zile ambazo hatupendi there are also positive amendments that we should also look at May I request maybe if you can maybe get something like an earphone or uh, because sauti yako sije unatumia nini kuna vile sauti yako inataka kuaragwara sana Aya wacha ni rekebisha enda tafadhali enda the next person then welcome back Aya sasa gilbert karibu sana 
Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Siju kama nalisikia. Hebu ongeza tu sauti. Ongeza tu sauti. Maybe uongee, maybe sasa ongeza sauti yako. Okay, sawa. Mnanisikia sasa? Eh eh. Uongee tu sauti ya juu wewe mwenyewe si msi gadget. Okay, 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 okay. Sawa, sawa, sawa. Uh, so for me, uh, my take about the 2023 uh, financial bill is that uh, I've heard about the taxations and the uh, mistake key too, but then there's a one thing that is uh, perturbing. Um, first of all, these uh, extra extra taxations and yes, we introduced, such as the house levy, being an example. Uh, if I tend to look at it at a realistic uh, view. It's something that is positive. It's good, and actually, we need that to better the living standards of Kenyans. It's very good. But then, the timing is just untimely. Um, currently, if I would um, tend to take myself as an example, I'm a Kenyan. Uh, I'd say, I'd say, minimum flat rate. Most of the jobs. Um, maximum maximum you get that uh it's it's just around 30 30 what you what you get at the end of the day and then when you cater for the needs and then you have to take care of yourself and everything else and the responsibilities you get that it's just like you're being taxed and then still it's like so Gilbert, maybe if I may ask you, what is positive yeah. about it? What is positive about it? If positive and it is the timing that is the problem. Then when should when is the right timing? So uh, the right timing. If I would if I would talk about the right timing, then there was the right timing way back in 20, 2012. That was the right timing. The timing. You know? yeah and then if we have to talk about the right timing it's 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 very delicate it's it's very delicate it's it can be done nothing is impossible it can be done but it's a very delicate issue it requires strict analogies and uh, a strict governance and leadership this is kenya everybody knows kenya yeah so the money will be collected but then at the end of the day who knows that's the question. So, so Gilbert, if I get you right, where how na shida na pesa ku collect? Or your worries, kama your pesa itafanya kazi yake. Exactly, exactly. So, exactly. Let's say if Kimberly a president, where to then apo akikisha that na za your pesa itafanya kazi. How na shida na kulipa hizo vitu? Omukoko Paul uh, Sandra Gilbert na Do you remember when the president was hosted in that joint uh, media houses interview? Alisema hiki to see tax. Alisema ni policy ama ni akauza wewe hiki to see tax akasema bwana hiki to Alisema nini Kimberly? Okay, from what I understood from the interview, he was, and all the interviews that all these government people have been having, they are, they are like preaching, it's a saving plan, it's a way of saving. So the government is not taking money from you, they are saving it for you, that you can be able to build a house. So the way when you start to want to build a house, Nanza could say, so now the government is saying, let us keep that money for you, we will get you a house, don't you worry. So, so, remember your question, come out taking you. Now, the thing is, see, they said if you don't want you will be part of the plan for seven years. If you don't want it, you go, you leave. Will you be giving your money back? <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> Paul, Paul, a book I mean, quick conversation because now you keep to kill your inflation or he keep to cook up and eat three percent in your person. You can understand that. Then I said, you are going to say, my take it. Mimi niko 60 something years. Niko 50 something years. Nisha jenga nyumba na kwa nataka. Ni pesa ya nini na mnanisaidia hapo hivi? Paul, what do you think this is the problem? Um okay. So you know we you've read out a lot of the provisions that have been given on the various areas, but I think the main issue will trickle down to um public participation because the clash here I've seen is whether people want it or not. 
um, one name of argument says someone or people might like it if it was at the right time, what wrong is wow, that kind of thing. But on public participation, particularly, um, how prevalent has public participation been? Like, genuine question. That's something I, I wondered. Because this is no different from any other bill. It's just that it's sensitive. It deals with finances. So it's going to be unique. But like every other bill, uh, it needs to be taken to the public and the people will give their views. So the finance bill is not the, uh, a different thing. It's a bill. But because of the precarious nature of it, you would expect a lot more public participation. But it has not been their straight answer. And just for your information, this is not public participation. Uh, us talking on social media, tweeting, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Public participation came in the form of, say, there are forms that were given by the Treasury that you're supposed to fill. I think the deadline was on 20th last month. Uh, the turnout was overwhelmingly low. So people don't want to comment at that time. Maybe they are ignorant. But after now, it has passed. Now people want to whine and that kind of thing. So I think it will be more of... Um, legal literacy of people even if you're not a lawyer or law student i think that will go a long way and it will even overshadow issues like timing because if you can collectively agree or at least understand something to the core uh it would be better so understand it know that it's there it's so i think it's on kenya e law uh have a chance to participate i love who you know do what you have to do now in relation to the three percent housing thing uh, and there's a reason I mentioned that was simple. Uh, okay, you've said someone is 57 and they are homeless, not homeless, they have a home, they've built probably a bungalow here in Nairobi and, and in Ushago and of Metosheka. And Paul, ongeza sauti, ongeza sauti, unasema point ya mana, sana ongeza sauti, unaka ukombali pia na your device. Oh, I'm sorry, it's better. No, okay, ongeza, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Uh, so when someone... When someone has basically made it in life, made it, because, you know, uh, the typical Kenyan whatever is Jenga home, Shags and Nairobi and have kids go to uni and that kind of thing. Then, you know, any, all the surplus money you can eat. But that's, uh, in this context, um, how well are they informed of, say, their, their children's future or that kind of thing? You know, there's a lack of a collective mentality, I would say, with people because... It ends with me here and you out here. You don't care. So maybe Ruto wants to, okay, maybe he has other sinister means because we don't know what he's thinking. But I think if it was intended in the right way, this would be more of a collective kind of uh, pursuit because you see it has some elements of things like socialism, that kind of thing, whereby mm. to some extent there is a collective responsibility and you can argue on the merits and demerits of that. But one, if, if I'm to argue for what he's doing, you're not being stripped of everything you want. It's just 3% and that kind of thing. And you're also building okay. it one. So, yeah, we, yeah, however you want to look so, at it. Let, let me ask all of you, Kwebunel. Well, sometimes most people say that Kenyans know what we see one for one. Our minute is short. Ukengalia kama the BBI report, when when the steering committee Lee and the panel and the committee. So what they came up with out of those points is that Kenyans don't trust anybody and they don't trust anybody. And furthermore, Kenyans don't trust any government official. So you can make it appear, it could deep the, the color, any it is, it could a root cause for You people, if you're aware, President Moi once had Vision 20, the Vision 2000, and every home every homestead was supposed to have piped water you know 23 years down the line here we are maybe some of your homes are gonna manage at uh if you look at vision 2030 but there are so many came sometimes when the kenyans are doubtful and are worried i understand kabisa vision 2030 here we are to in a city in a we look at some of the roads kenyans look at some of the stalled projects in the country Look at any given constituency. Um, I want to believe every area. If you walk on Ngong Road, on Pika Road, on Juja Road, or even all the, the Busia, uh, Nairobi Busia Highway, either on a bridge, 
you won't get it initially. In fact, before doing this session, someone was telling me, we highlight the issue of the, this bridge from a place called Ugunja heading to a place called Ukwala. This bridge has been consuming people's lives. Like every week when I read them, I want to meet with Barabara, Nyanguka, and Nyamto. This and the Kenyans have always been promised to have Baliza is Barabara. Here now we are. You know the story of the dams. And I'm saying this confidently because government had promised this. It is not about truth, it is not about Uhuru. It's about government promising Kenyans that we will deliver this. Do they usually deliver? The answer is a big no. The other issue again that now comes in up and in, people are even saying this same same government that has an attack with Jengia or Kenya Nyumba, surely the water to the other one has made already a problem. Houses for police officers is already a problem. All these other things. So, don't you think sometimes Kenyans are just okay without some of these things? Uh, my friend from Uko. Yeah, thank you, Fodo. I think the quick answer is, of course, yes, Kenyans are very doubtful of these projects. Uh, of course, Badawana Subiri laptops, uh, and I think the Uhuru regime had promised to build about 500,000 units of such housing. Uh, they only ended up building about 50,000 of them. Uh, but also, Kenyans are thinking about the practicality of these measures that are being put in place. Of course, I think Paul mentioned that there are merits to this, because thinking of it from an economic standpoint, uh, these houses are being constructed by Kenyans, so that will create jobs. That will be a positive thing, thinking about that. Uh, but aside from that, also thinking about just uh, decongesting the slums that we have. But I don't think that solves the real problem. We have slums because everyone is coming to the city to look for jobs. So if we can decentralize our manufacturing farms and industries, if we can take development to the rural areas, then people will not come here. So Kenyans are also very practical people. They want to see something and look at the impact. Uh, but also thinking about the timing, and this is something that has been mentioned by several people, the fact that the inflation rate is already high. People are starving. And a lot of people say they already have houses. At least everyone sleeps somewhere. I know there are a lot of homeless people, and I'm not trying to be insensitive. Uh, but people think that this is not a priority. Uh, but one thing I know is that there's no single human being I've met who wants to see that Alkwana earned 32,000 and now they're earning 30,000. Uh, it doesn't matter. I would deduct one shilling or one cent. People don't like having money taken from their base And so that would be one of the reasons why a lot of Kenyans would be against this. Because Kilamdo Wepanga budget yaki, and I do, I earn 33K. I'm going to use this money here and here and here. Like Isa, now you're earning much less than you used to, to earn. But in terms of trusting our governments, we certainly don't trust this government. We don't trust governments because Atacama government is uh, in the same The government recently just, uh, Ruto's regime employed 50 CASs. And people are wondering if you have enough money to employ all these people for the mere reason that they are your friends or they promise you promise them during the campaign period that you'll get them a position in government, then why should we trust you with our resources? The high profile cases that had to be discontinued just because people got into positions of power. Kenyans wonder, can we trust this government with our money? And all these people in Yakukwai Serikali Sai, every one of them when you are at least are a scandal somewhere. So there are many reasons why Kenyans should not trust the government. And that's why I think uh, we should not be surprised when we see this happening. Mm -hmm. And even as we talk about um, some of these tall projects that maybe make Kenyans wonder what is happening, you all were alive when we were threatened to Kambiwa without Kuduma cut. Put our part in service in this country. You remember how we were told to take off from our jobs and schools, and people are going to the chief come to Jesus for Kuduma cut, a cut that we've never seen. I know some people are Miziona. When you to Joy Ziona, we don't even know what happened after that. Uh, Kenyans are asking some of the billions you're supposed to be used in constructing dams, Zikwabi. I uh, remember the stadiums. And again, now you're just aware that Kenya is building towards the Afcon. Kenya is now, pretty, uh, our, our government actually, we are building towards the Afcon up easy. Um, now that will come with the preparation for uh, the, this ground. Just yesterday, where Madaraka was hosted yesterday, the stadium itself already going to issue that the money that was released to be renovate in preparation for that, I get okay at all. So I think every, every day when I hear Kenyans doubting, there's always some kind of reason. And I, I, can't, I can't afford to wish away um, what the people think, because to me, people, people are the power. So 
some of these they're talking about, I think now it is also about the government just to see how they'll redeem their image. But now let me come back quick to you, Sandra, Oduho, Paul, and the stack and Mukoko. Now, if because for a long time our issue has always been that to make choker kuomba pesa nje. Don't you think now the government is on the right track? Imamu has such a pursuit tax from every corner so that we don't borrow money. Isn't it now not a good gesture? Ama wa Kenya mnataka ngani? Kimbal. Okay. Um, Kenyans actually, we don't we don't have a problem with getting money with, with paying taxes. We don't have a problem. Kenyans are workers. Kenyans are people. We have mandamano on Monday and on Tuesday people go to work like nothing ever happened and we'll still pay those taxes. The worry is we are going to pay taxes, but where is the money going? Every government comes with a scandal. It is scandal after scandal. And something funny with our government, once the Ruto regime has ended, another one will come. Will they continue with the projects that he had started or will it end? with the current president that is what we are worried about if we had a clear plan and understood like for, let's just take a practical example look at what Ruto is doing every project that Uhuru had is being removed one by one everything is just being removed everything and all the blame is going now to that government but then now the next person to succeed Ruto will he continue with the, all these projects will people end up getting their houses or what will, what will happen in the long run. We can see even the free primary mm -hmm. education, which is going on, but it is not being maintained. Okay, yes, there's free primary education, but these kids are still paying for exams. If our country is free, why are they paying to sit for exams? Why are they paying to sit for open exams? Why are these schools charging kids to come with ring papers? On every month, parents are being asked to bring ring papers to school. The problem we have in our country is the succession from different governments. If we have a pres another president and we are sure that all this money we have been taxed, all the projects they are doing, we are going to get whatever we were promised, it will be better. But the minute you sit for another election, 2027, the manifestos will be so different from what you are seeing now. And then we'll just relax after like two months, housing scandal. Then we are back in a panel discussing. That's the problem that we're facing as Kenyans at this point. This gover the government mm. has not given us a clear definition of this is what you're going to do. And within this timeline, uh, you will have your houses. And this is what you're going to do in terms of giving out the houses. If it was like a slum project, I would have understood we are dedicating the slums. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. Someone on the other YouTube lack of administrative continuity. I think this happens a lot. We've all we've all seen, and um, I like the fact that also as we talk about national government, like I feel we have a for county government. Have you seen these dramas in Manza Pole Pole? Kila governor apparently looks like most of these governors and the deputies are in the coalition government. And like in Kericho, Kericho County yesterday it played out so plainly when the deputy governor. Now, governor, while well, clash in one function in your organizer as a county, deputy governor Kisema, governor Anamudarau Sana, na hii serikali, hiyo serikali yao ya county likuwa coalition government, alajua mbona li msupport ni wa win, na na feel like ajapewa share yake serikali. We've seen this drama in my home county, Sierra County, where the deputy anasema, uh, the governor, ame pata, ame, ame juo kume kuna loopholes, pingi sana za kuipa iba pesa, things that Kenyans don't know. We had these things when, um, where was it, West Pokot County. So you remember Governor Professor Dunyangapu. Deputy Waki Alisav, as a deputy governor, five years. So as we talk about this taxation, as we talk about uh, the, uh, someone here just mentioned that 50 people, 50 CSs were employed, given a job in this country. Government na inasema hakuna pesa. I think there's now something that we also need to start even asking our government. Every time we hear the president going around, the cabinet secretary, they're always promising something. When a governor and the tenga half a billion moja and tenga pale million yomsimu malizeni le kitu malizeni le kitu. Now the question is, I person at all. But now back to the big question up here, Steve, um, or anyone who'd like to go on that question, I was asking, is it our time now? Maybe just to say, hey, congratulations, government. Finally, monitor what you name on the Pomba Pesanje, 
mtu tax kabisa milkers kabisa we elected you milkers um can i can i say something yes yes okay um for me vilina yona i see that uh it's either two way it's two ways what, what the government is trying to do if i tend to look at it it's that it's trying to curb two problems at a go the problem that is trying to be curbed is one thing that naturally kenyans will not accept that is the truth there's one who will uh, wake up in the morning he is done with campus and then the only option that he or she has is to kuchota maji watu wa kikoroga no one will accept so for me i think um this taxation is is actually to some extent it's positive there's two sides for everything it's positive and then it's negative it's positive to what sense the country currently production production productivity a country aiko poa sana and some things like house living and all these things that they're trying to do these are things that can easily be done when the country is able to produce a surplus and when the country is not able to produce the surplus then you have to get the money from the people willing or not willing and at this in our case in Kenya people are not willing already even our leaders themselves mtu amekatalia mshara yake he or she doesn't want like to be cut so uh, i think for me i think if it's taxing what are taxing if any but then the government should also at least to do something make sure that the money no it, 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 it is it is it is it is like it is like this okay they will not borrow they have not to borrow i support they should not borrow but then whoever in short gilbert nasema acha to taxiwe to taxiwe lakini 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 before weke lakini before weke to lakini hapo uh-huh. 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 it is a good way to go it is a good way to go so ni sasa utaleta so unasema but unataka at least uone kazi hiyo tax inafanya exactly the, the the money should be circulating within the country okay sawa so. yeah distribution of income in afai kwa sawa my friend victory wangu anasema hapa hivi that um, there is an impeachment coming for governor matangi also governor matangi sorry also in kiambu mimi najiuliza kwa nini county government zote they were just arrangements na kanga ni kama arrangement wewe na nini nisaidie nikishaingia pale nda kufanyia hiyo ukishaingia mbele kugeuka naambia boss sasa lazima utoke mara unasikia sa MCS are loyal due to the deputy governor mara MCS wengine are loyal to the governor okay paul kitwe nini ujamaa umekasirishia hivi now two issues there eh? the first one mm-hmm. and very briefly if it's in terms of where people's money is going i think 90% of kenya's problems on graft and an accountability for money will be solved by a change in in, in structure paul tunakupoteza paul we really? refresh kidogo na kurisjini vile unakama ni i think you need to be close here eh? now is that better okay and then yeah so it will be a change in in like the structure or the fundamental structure of how we are governed as Kenyans because uh okay we, we were fortunate the other day to have a PLO come to our law school and he gave a talk and he said uh they had drafted a constitution initially that had like a quarter of the civil servants we have now but it was taken to bombers and walikata because that meant people would lose their jobs and now you have like a big chunk of government money going to revenue and you know with those tiny factions efficiency is taken away money is lost in that way but like that's just a general way but that's like long term and it will have to be some kind of massive revolution to change that but now more on the practicalities of what happened right now uh Kenyans do want to pay tax but now this is to gain but and also um, now agreeing with Kimberly but the, the the structure is a problem because i was looking at what you are reading i was looking at i've just been looking at excise tax here uh this basically sin tax as you know it's um it's a way to disincentivize people from uh buying other goods or something like that then you look at sin tax on digital lenders 
so it's gone from 7.5 percent to 20 percent you know uh now that's big also now obviously you can even say it's preferential because in a bank from 20 to 15 but on paper that will be a practical model right you want to disincentivize people from taking debts and that kind of thing but practically how many kenyans use Tala? how many kenyans are on hustler fund and that kind of thing furthermore nimonata mpesa and mobile money has been increased so how many kenyans do have mpesa and they don't have a mobile bank so if you increase their rates what are you doing to them how many kenyans use the two concurrently that is mobile money one a love who like with the with, uh, like digital lending a quick loan on a copper not many kenyans have banks because they probably don't meet the threshold of the collateral um, in terms of the collateral you will give to a bank which is you know and omukoko was talking about ha having 2m will put you in the top one percent a lot of kenyans are not there so kenyans probably are willing to be more progressive into what they can achieve but i don't think the government thinks the policies through in a very pragmatic manner to accompany a lot of what we are going through as Kenyans. So that was just something that you know I popped into my mind, something I thought worth mentioning. So what, wonderful. Braven Yuri here says another part of his Yuri Sana Bravo. Thanks so much Mazir, for coming. This is one of the champions uh or issues to do with mental health. I've said, yes, I'm to push these conversations out there. And um, uh, Bravin, it's you can put it to a screen, you know, just get my inbox, you know, where they really know how to get me. There's a point going on, uh, I've been following keenly the thing that you've been posting, as it was so amazing. Some Kenyans have never had a problem with paying taxes. They have a problem with these taxes not being accounted for. Yet they keep raising these taxes and finding ways to tax us more. And I think that's a, that is just what we've been talking about. The issue is never about If anyway, what do we tax you? But how about if we just see e person of Panyanga Nini in Nangawapi? You know, uh, like recently when I had this story of um, Muliona, like over 800,000 Kenyans in Panya KCC. Let me call them Kenyans because they are no longer young people in Kenya. Pinyame figures are easy to Panya KCC. I think we're doing Muse in this country. Um, the past, I think I was only about 45,000 people, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, about 45,000 people qualified to proceed. What when I could government support at the reduced. The question is, how to end our So, you go on to be a like, okay, taxes then you do easy upper, then the Kufundisha were total. Taxes then you do easy upper, and then you forgot the hospital, like was our Kenyan and really popular new Russian Kisumi for you. Mombasa, whatever, Eldoret, Ikoivi, Angalini Shulezeni. Tunani Shulezeni watoto wako sawa, hey, wanakula poa, hey, haya sawa. Angalini barabara zenyu. Drengis iku sawa, lights zinafanya sawa. Sasa hizo ni kutuzi nyewa kenyo wanazema waka wawoni. Now that brings the question, yeah, mbona tunataksi. And I think that could be one of the points that even Bravin is referring to. Bravin is referring to. Haya sasa. Haya sasa. Kama ya nangita kumbize. Kama ya nangita kumbize. May I? Uh... Can you, you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, just on the question in your Mobiliza, uh, on the matter of tax. Yes, we should pay tax. Uh, you see, for example, like uh, I, I come from South Sudan, and as such, uh, we live in a country where it is ravaged by conflict. Now, you see, when I come back to Kenya, uh, I, I realize, you see, it is, it is easy to, uh, to, for example, take a phone and call the police if, uh, if, I, if I have a security incident at home. If I have a health issue, I can take the phone up and I can call uh, an ambulance to come, uh, to come to my home. And you see, these are, these are, these are things that uh, I believe uh, most often the not people take for granted. That there is there is the, there is an entire the territory is being protected by the government of Kenya, and you see, uh, the government of Kenya can only do this by ensuring that it has the money to do so. And there are two ways of doing it: either by collecting taxes or through production. Now, when we look when we look at at, at the issue of uh, of debt to GDP ratio, I we conclude one thing: debt is not the problem. 
and it has been mentioned more here more than several times, the issue is the management of those funds. And you see, what we have is constant misappropriation of funds, which is blatant corruption. And anyone can just go online and look at how many graft issues have been raised by the Auditor General, and none of them have been addressed. No, uh, no one has been uh, has been convicted for the monies that have been stolen, and 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 maybe it is because people know that the consequence uh, uh, the consequence to bear is is, is not so dire. So maybe maybe we should take the China route, where uh, those who are found uh, guilty of corruption ought to be put to death. But of course, we may not necessarily be so barbaric. What we may want to do is bring up a law that. Uh, that ensures that these people are put into prison for life because of corruption. If maybe then the consequence of corruption is made dire enough, then it would act as a deterrent. But this is just my own personal opinion. But when you look at the issue of debt to GDP ratio, Kenya has a debt to GDP ratio of 67%. And this, if we compare to the United States, which stands at 133%, then we can see that Kenya doesn't really have a debt problem. You see, uh, and I believe we can respond to this that here, uh, on the matter of payment of taxes, uh, it is that a government cannot tax its way to prosperity. This is a fact. There is nowhere in history, and even today, that that has happened. There is no, uh, you cannot tax away to prosperity. It is a matter of balancing between uh, the taxes that are collected, the, uh, the production, through state-owned corporation, uh, and ult ultimately through debt. Here, we find that uh, the debt issue is becoming quickly unsustainable because of the issue of corruption. And you see, these are now the two, uh, the two hidden taxes uh, that uh, I believe it is important to bring to life. One, it is inflation, and two, it is corruption. The president, uh, the, the former president Uhuru himself said that Two billion a day is being stolen. Now, surely, if this is true, yeah, I, 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 and I mean, we must look at the office that the man held at the time to be able to determine whether this is um, whether it is true or false. And highly likely, it is true because this was the president himself speaking on this matter. And you see, it is not we have the government is having issues maintaining balance of payment, not because there are not enough taxes being collected not because the government is having that problem, it is solely because of corruption. And until this issue of corruption is solved, then we will always have uh, ourselves gathering in such forums, continuing to have such discussion, because even if, uh, now in regards to the issue of successive governments, what I believe ought to be done is there has to be a national development plan. And this is where a line ought to be drawn between politics and governance, because they are two different things. What, what must not what, what we must not play politics over is the development of the nation. There has to be a, a common development plan for the entire nation, which every every citizen of the country can agree to. And hence, it would be as a matter of performance of which successive governments uh, worked best to achieve say the development plans we can uh, so we we have just mentioned the issue of uh, the vision to uh, vision 2000 there's the issue of the first coming uh, vision 2023 for the for, for the greater africa we have the issue of vision 2063 we can come up by, with 20, as by 2023 you mean 2030 right my goodness thank you very much oh. for correcting me mm -hmm. yeah so so uh, we, we, we might come up with many beautiful visions but at the end of the day it's about management if we have good management, then very well, we shall achieve these visions. But as long as there is poor management, then we shall always linger and always come up with new vision to replace the old ones because they will always remain unachieved. You know, sometimes I do tell myself before I bring someone in, Mamukoko, uh, preferably, when Baridi, then you go to Kimbali. If you've studied in Kenya and you've been to most Kenyan schools, system is okay. I, I want to believe that some of you who joined from one, mukapata kuna school bus ilikuwa inachangiwa. Mukamaliza hiyo form kwa mkuu yone ya school bus. Some of us went to schools when to lefika kama swimming pool inachangiwa. We are going back to those schools right now na pata penyu swimming pool ilifaa kujengwa sa hizi ni classes. So, ile pesa kwa tunachanga adi adi marambezi ilifanyo. You know, no, no one will ever count for it because no one will ever go back to school. 
to find out I used to be a parent here four or five years ago. Uh, if you've ever been part of any board meeting, and you know, these are conversations that we have to have, we must have. If you speak to any any person who is part of a board, a part of the board of any school, the loopholes that you see there, I think you are able to see how an entire government looks like. Is it systems now, even as my, my friend Bravin Yuri talks about uh, accountability? Is it that loopholes ziko mingi uh, mukoko too much that kuziziba ina kuangumu? Because you see now, kama hizi loopholes za zizibu yama ziko too much, then even the taxes sometimes becomes difficult. You remember the former president, that is President Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, as rightly quoted by Oduho, saying, Kenya tunapoteza 2 billion per day. And I also want to believe it is true. When the president, when president anafungumu mdoma anasema kitu kama hiyo, he received the first-hand information. He definitely knows what he's talking about. E two billion. Ni kushwa seti ni upadeo na chukua tu two billion dema. Yani ni ile tu dogo tu dogo from county to what you have to keep up a more cumulatively. So ni ile pesa you can account for by the end of the month to divide it for the whole of a day. Per day, this is how it looks like. Omukoko, is the issue also with us as Kenyans, man? Maybe to make about to move it to Sunday. Uh, upon there are so many issues, and I, I don't think we can address all of them in one sitting. But I'll just make a quick counter to what Adoho said. Uh, he mentioned a lot of good points, uh, but maybe comparing the U.S. to Kenya, uh, debt to GDP, uh, there is some slight difference in the sense that the ratings of Kenya uh, as a lender, or maybe in the ratings of the U.S. are different. And that means that we pay more for the loans we take as compared to the U.S., which is considered an almost risk-free country. So they don't pay as much on their debt. So I think we should still be concerned to that end. But I agree with a lot of everything else that you say. Uh, of course, taxes are good. Uh, and the reason why I like taxes is because it makes Kenyans more responsible. Next time you're voting, we will be very careful on what someone says about taxes. Because when the government spends money that it receives through aid, through the IMF or through whatever other places it gets money, we don't care that much because we feel that that is not our money. But once the money comes, women cut a 3% of Jenga Nyumba, your 3% in And mm -hmm. I think that will improve accountability and Kenyans will become more responsible citizens. Uh, and it's also more sustainable than just borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. We're thinking of a country like Japan, which is even worse than the US, with about a debt, of G G a debt to GDP ratio of about 200 or over 200. Uh, again, that is not very sustainable for even an economy as big as Japan. But that said, uh, the problem in Kenya is we have registered voters, about 19 million registered voters. The number of registered taxpayers is only 2.5 million. So instead of taxing more few people, taxing more on few people, we need to tax less on more people. If we get taxes from these 19 million people, as opposed to getting taxes from only 2.5 million people, I think we'll still generate more revenue. Uh, but the other problem we have is, who are you taxing? Mtu hana pesa. I always see this cartoon of a cow that has been milked dry. And we are still taxing this. So I think that is a big problem. When you tax a country, a wealthy country, that is understandable. So the government needs to take austerity measures. If this is an, a crisis indeed, let's see Ruto reducing the number of cars in his convoy. Let us see the amount of money that is, uh, is spent on servicing offices where no one ever gets in or no one ever does anything there, getting reduced. Once we see such things, Kenyans will become supportive. But as long as the government remains as extravagant as it is, uh, then it will be very hard for us to convince Kenyans that indeed we are in problems and we need to get out of this problem as quickly as possible. Uh, and mm -hmm. the other thing is if we, are not, if we are not solving the inefficiencies that we have, we are not collecting taxes from people. So we need to collect more taxes from these people. So how sure are we that by taxing these 2.5 million people even more, instead of taxing the entire 19 million people who are registered voters, uh, then how sure are we that we are actually solving the actual problem? Which is, a lot of us file nil returns, uh, despite the fact that we might be doing some little businesses here and there, we might be doing a bit to happen a valley. And I saw KRA trying to incentivize Kenyans, Wakanda Mpaka, Twitter, and they increased the revenues. They increased the revenues that they were able to collect from Kenya. So I think such measures will be more helpful than taxing people who are already overtaxed, uh, taxing people who are poor, taxing people whose lives are as miserable as they are now. Uh, so that is my take on that, Uduho, uh, or Pondo, sorry. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think, of course, government is only a quarter of person. That is something that is not easy to. There's a lot of dead weight law costs uh, in terms of ensuring that we seal all these loopholes. It would be hard to seal them completely. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the efforts can be made. But remember, to seal these loopholes, we have to spend so much money. So we your taxes to collect and then to make sure we spend the entire tax sealing loopholes. 
which is not very efficient. So if we mm-hmm. increase our efficiency, we might not even need them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the point to we have 19 million, over 19 million registered voters, but uh, only about 2.5 registered people with their uh, KRA. Now on the issue of um, at least taxing little on more people, now that also calls for the government itself but here, what we should do is acquire the tax, just as you're saying, because again, we can say today, okay, I to tax our tax, but what exactly are we taxing? So, then I think now that leads us to the question of are employment opportunities being created? Because I tell myself all the time, government should even be working with the projection. Like now, the government knows what we're going to do with the this year. Government that in a jewel, because they have these records, right? they have the data, they know this year what we're going to graduate. In fact, we're going to graduate, graduate from Ghana. Is there anything being done with the physical teacher that our work will graduate, what a patakazi, or shall patakazi, this is presented to a tunic, make it over to a tunic, tunic, dog of them is a very shall patakazi, Kimberley's Mopotaka, Tatika, or to let a five care for Kidogo. Uh, Gilbert let a three kia kwa kwa kidogo, duo let a ten kia kwa duo unajua ya lezo wenu kupatia ten kia weni mpumzito. Uh, Paul Pala tuseme let a thirty kia kwa kidogo kwa ni mpumzito. You know, now that's the thing. You give opportunities kwanza, people are employed, but you can't keep on taxing because you haziko from the point I'm getting from Mkoko, right? <coughs> Thank you. Okay, Kimberly? Um. Okay, so... One thing that really, really stood out for me in that whole bill, it wasn't even the housing, the housing, that that, was, that aside, content creators. Now, because the youth right now, Gen Zs are a really creative generation. Like, we didn't get, we're not getting employment anywhere. Like, it's hard to get employment. And every employment, like, when you go and apply, they need experience. Where are we getting experience from? If even getting an attachment is a problem in this country. Just getting an attachment from a, from a course you've done for four years, going for internship is a problem. The internships are unpaid. You don't even have fare to go to those internships. And this, every company in Kenya now wants experience. Every organization wants experience. What did we decide to do? We decided to be creative. We got TikTok, we got Instagram, we got YouTube. People are creating content, fashion content. People are having podcasts and having live shows. And the money they get, as you said, it's not as much money. The money they get is just to feed them. You see, what the government is doing right now is discouraging this generation. They're discouraging us from anything. Because the moment, because these people work on freelance, like you have to get a promotion from somewhere. Come on, Mimi Nezambiwa. I get Omo to come and tell me now, advertise this on TikTok. The money they give me is supposed to be my money because I was the one who sat down, thought of a creative video to do and post it on social media. But then going and claiming that they earn more than you as a president, it doesn't make sense. It honestly doesn't. We have these comedians. I, I, can really, comedians. I can really imagine Kimberly. I think you are referring to the president's speech, Jana. Yeah. I, 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 you know, uh, <laughs> I listened to that speech and I was like, okay, so this is the person we elected. And this is something hmm. the youth now I have to pay. Because me personally, I trust your name to Ruma. When people were called okay. out to vote, the youths did not come out to vote. The numbers from the youths were very, very low. You know, as youths, if we decide to put someone like Opondo, we will put Opondo. But my mom, if I tell her that Opondo wants to vote for presidency, she'll look at me like, who is this young man? But as youths, we are the majority. But when it comes to time when we want to select leaders, we usually sit down and relax. And then when now things go mulama, is when we want to start crying. That we are being taxed, we are being taxed, we are content creators. Youth need to take a stand. Okay. We should not be speaking what Raila is saying or what Uguru is saying. We need to speak your own voice. And that will only happen mm-hmm. in that will only happen when we are now in the balance. Yeah. Okay, so start. 
Uh, there's someone, there's someone at uh, the backstage. Um, Oduko, maybe you can I can easily sacrifice you, Kidogo, then the Kurisha Ballet, because I notice our platform can only carry up to six people. Let me bring in Tegila just to share with us what he thinks, then I'll bring you later. Kshama, later you can just step out. Uh, Bravin, I know you also want to join Bravin. You can also just click and join. I've sent you the link. Perfect. Uh, Gilbert, can I sacrifice you, Kidogo, to be in the Kurisha? Let me just allow these two people to share whatever. Uh, uh, the information they have with us, then, um, uh, then uh, I'll bring you back. So, so, okay, okay, do for now. That means now I have to remove you from the mainstream. Perfect. And now, here we have Bravin. Bravin, Karibu Sana. Thank you, thank you. Pardon if I'm going to hail you from my end. So, I'm hey, not quite Karibu. Karibu Sana, I saw you are really following the other side on YouTube, but at least <laughs> as much you put it for screen. You've also been uh, really, really passionate about this whole issue of um, taxation, Nini, Nai, Finance Bill, Pravin. What is your take on this generally? Kwanza, I want to for me, Changanyo. So many people have been, uh, what can I say? I think they have redirected them to believing that the finance bill is all about the house slave. Mm -hmm. It's not. You know, people are so focused about the house slave. If you look at uh, the last, like, like um, almost uh, almost three weeks, it's just been house slave, house slave here, house slave there. So it's just a matter of um, trying to divert your attention from looking at the bigger picture. Because if you look at the taxes, they are so punitive. And you know, uh, as one of the, of the speakers had already said, you cannot uh, tax your way. Um, you cannot tax your way to development uh, technically because you cannot develop a country by overtaxing its citizens. You need to create an environment where people are able to grow, uh, they're able to do business so that at least they can be able to grow themselves, yeah? so that the burden is not too much and you're not overtaxing them for an extent where businesses are shutting down rather than uh, you should be able to create an environment that is conducive for them. Um, then there's the issue that I have an I have an issue with uh, what they call the withholding tax, fifteen percent on influencers. You know, these are people whom the government has not been able to create employment for, and these are people who have gone out of their way to try and create something for themselves instead of becoming thieves, instead of becoming mm -hmm. cons, instead of becoming scammers. So now the government is after them, and you know the the problem is. Uh, the government itself does not even support these influencers. It's like the music industry, the football industry. If you look at our sports, they're barely supported. Yeah. So these are talents that should have been nurtured. And if uh, they're nurtured to an, a good extent, you know, footballers out there pay taxes, right? Because mm -hmm. they're getting money and the support is there. But here, it's not there. Even if you go to tax these people, they can't even afford transport to, to the field straight you know mm -hmm. so now if you come to the influencers to that end um moving it from five percent to fifteen withholding it's it, it's quite a huge leap uh, they would have said maybe maybe even seven that would make sense but just from five to fifteen it doesn't make sense to me um and at the same time you know this is an industry that has just started growing if now you start taxing them to this extent already they are being taxed by youtube um you know if as a content creator when you put your content here it's already taxed right then now mm -hmm. imagine the government coming after it and now you will be remaining with something that doesn't add up but you know it's not easy to get that amount that people always make normally and when you see a president going to an event like yesterday and starting to she comp to compare his salary with people like Zuguna, it, it doesn't make sense to me as a person also because uh, this is a president, he is employed by the citizens. Juguna is as is, is, is employed by himself. You cannot compare someone who is working for himself with someone whom you have employed. Definitely, someone who works as their own boss is likely to make more money. So, it, it's just something that they're trying to play with their psychology to make it look like it's something, but it's not something, it's just out there to me. Um, so, I think there is more that this government needs to do. Those taxes that they have, they have, they have tried to, to put in that bill, they are way, 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 way over what we can manage as, as, as Kenyans. Because mm -hmm. they, the moment you you, you, you overtax, you tax fuel, everything else becomes a problem. The moment now you, you know, what I was proposing for them is to make, um, to increase the tax base so that you have many people who are paying taxes rather than uh, having a few people who are paying taxes, then you overtax them. It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. 
need create an environment where even businesses can be set up uh, so that these businesses can grow and pay taxes encourage people to pay taxes that is the only way you can raise good money right mm -hmm. but now mm -hmm. if you if, if you over tax people many will decide not to engage in that kind of business and eventually you will lose the people whom you are taxing initially and nobody will be there for you to collect a revenue from and also there's the issue where i was telling them that they need to also get a way in which they can make it easier for people to do business for example if you look at the issue of licensing um for example when you, when you want to start up, up a business you have to get a health certificate you have to get so many certificates by the time you start the business you have already wasted a lot of money in terms of just getting the licenses if they can harmonize it into one certificate then it can help start people to start many businesses in an in a way in which now they can be able to also now raise more revenue but now when they do it like this and they're not solving other problems we are not going anywhere i think uh, by the end by the time a year of this government ends many people will have been tired and so many would wish that they would never even have to file even taxes. Yeah, that's my view. Something wrong that you are saying, and I was just like, actually, uh, I'm a big fan of um, uh, Ronald Reagan's view on the issues. There's this famous quote that he once said that um, you can't you can't tax business because businesses don't pay taxes; they collect taxes. Actually. <laughs> Uh, his view was that businesses actually help government collect taxes. So if you are making it so difficult for businesses even to, uh, to to operate, then definitely you're even killing yourself. And as you're mentioning very, very, very well, the cost of starting, let alone even running, the cost of starting a business in this country, it is so difficult. I want you to see yourself from a like someone going to get a stall in the city centre right now. Here you have a stall, you're doing your business inside, you're paying everything fire, CG music, CG nini. Then right in front of you, there's also a hawker selling, same, same products that you're selling. <laughs> in fact, even selling them at a cheaper, at a, a better rate than you. You are paying rent, you're doing all this, yet your government is not even there to defend you. Coming back again to Ronald Reagan, he said, the problem is not that the people don't pay taxes. The problem is that the government is overfed. And actually, when you look at this, all these things, sometimes it comes now back to the issue of the CAS, we, who are, um, uh, I mean, the high number of people that we are paying. Sometimes we don't even understand why we are paying some of these people, but we have to pay them. Tehila, welcome on board. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. I have so much to say about this bill. I also have nothing to say about it. It's just extremely controversial. Mm -hmm. um, I this entire week, this entire past week, I have had the first hand experience of trying to set up a business, being alone and encountering all those bills. Um, in the past, I had the, I was able to, you know, talk my way into deals and mergers and able to um, set up businesses through, you know, share acquisition and whatnot. So it was easy for me. But now starting uh, starting work with my own cash directly or without any investor funding is terrifying so much so that I have had to I've had to pause uh, I've had to pause what I was trying to do. There are three things I see about this potential finance bill uh, that I think are problematic. Number one, the finance bill, was instituted uh, was instituted or was placed as a bill in stages the first stage happened during uhuru's regime and it was a means for uhuru to try and balance out the checks from the massive amount of borrowing he was doing in order to ensure that the government still remains and so that the company the country does not collapse it was his way of trying to solve an issue he was creating and so Ruto comes in and he finds that the country's coffers are empty. But politics is politics and the country still has to pay its loyalists. If you read, uh, if you read uh, Linjiru's book or you read uh, any of Linjiru's book, he, he basically talks about the same, same things. In Kenya, the people who get paid the most are loyalists. Not anybody else, especially when it comes to politics. 
it's the loyalists who get paid so basically the inflated the the bloated government we have is simply because ruto had too many loyalists that he needed to pay off one way or another and he needed to pay them off party and for the safety of his political uh for for the safety of, of his political mileage he's a 55 year old man he still has a shot at going for presidency for a second term so he had to defend his political side um he has a very for a man who's very smart um he has proven himself to be the kind of president who you would not want to choose as kenyans in this way number one he has prioritized politics despite saying he was elected he was prayed into president it is clear his perspective towards the people of kenya is that his electorate budget his electorate campaign budget is the one that put him into presidency he clearly attributes that why else would he pay the loyalists fast take care of the politics politicians fast and give us all nothing but talk you know second thing his push for the finance bill his push his push for the finance bill is something he has to do because he has literally no other way of sorting out the country from his perspective of course and the incompetency of his advisors one of one of us one of them who's very famous mr ndi mr ndi who has had uh, who has had the history of talking to proper economists has not given the president good advice economic advice we were having this discussion on the road and i took part in the public participation uh, a bit of the finance bill and Ken- and the ideas that kenyans were bringing up to tax themselves in a way that would ensure a proper business environment and uh, and, and 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 what not was overwhelming one of the things uh, one of the things if, as i was coming back home today one of the things my dad was saying if the government really wanted money he they would put speed cameras on the road they'd put speed cam- speed cameras on the road and capture drivers going above speed limit they'd get a lot of you know cash just affecting the law but there are too many people corrupt back from uh, from uh, too many people corrupt down the line to the traffic cop for them to be able to properly you know properly take advantage of the law and use it to even you know gain revenue because that's another alternative source of revenue what i think what i think they should do is they should take the opposite approach instead of pushing this bill they should try and reduce taxes as much as possible for a government that is uh, that is on the brink of default they should try and remove taxes as much as possible okay reduce the number of people who reduce the number of people in government and reduce taxes this is why he uh, he is why number one reducing taxes reducing the tax cuts enable a business environment just as brian has said and i'm sure just as all of the other speakers have said taxes re- tax cuts in promote a business environment more capital at the bottom ensures that the government has enough revenue number two they should institute friendly friendly tax practices tax practices that tax okay let's say to the common mwananchi if you ask them what do you think your tax has done for you they have no way of saying in fact they will say as they will feel as if taxes are a necessary evil uh a necessary evil something the government has to do that they have to suffer for as opposed mm-hmm. to them realizing that you see these taxes have benefits we can see these benefits clearly in our lives as citizens if the government really wanted to push us towards taxes they'd show us what our tax is doing but we constantly hear of scandals scandals uh are, are of a bloated government that. yes i wish you were here earlier i wish you were here mm-hmm. earlier just join me yes about to uh, come to the end of the show actually we really this was a very interesting conversation when you were starting the issue of the scandal mm-hmm. The issue of uh, stalled projects, the issue of um, government being overfed, and uh, I'm also mm-hmm. liking the the idea that you're saying, you know, government should reduce the number of people um, uh, they are absorbing. Yeah. But again, you're also the same po- person saying that uh, Ruto is um, serving actually his loyalists, so <laughs> so it is also even becoming very difficult. But uh, but I just wish and hope that this is a conversation we can even just create a time 
for it because honestly there's just so much to talk about on this uh, yes. whole issue but also now not to not really to keep the other people at the backstage waiting let me bring in uh kimberly kimberly sorry for keeping you waiting just to share what uh, you wanted to share before we bring this one to a close here um so for the way forward we all know we are here we know that you no know, this finance bill is there and we are going to have to face it and we are going to have to now pay all those taxes but the, we need accountable leaders we need accountable leaders the, our money needs to be accounted for to the last day. they cannot keep on taking money and they're not telling us what is actually going on because we live in a country where we just wake up nothing is being done we wake up to breaking news this is going on covid take an example of the covid covid crisis at upper cell hospitality people are, are are stealing like kenya we are we are really struggling as a country and it's time for us to realize we are struggling because come on mm -hmm. hospital you think they're gonna save this housing and the tax they are they are, they are they are like putting it out on us and the, the oh, sorry to sorry to interject sorry to interject yeah so they need to stop forcing kenyans to actually pay if we see what our money is doing we'll pay willingly we'll pay those taxes if we see those units an example of a house unit what if to to a person love to put on manyata to na jengewa like we need a plan <laughs> no for real where is the land <laughs> me personally okay. Okay. where is the land we need to see land number one we need to see the land to ambiwe kuna jengewa nyumba hapa and doing you up as and answer build at least one unit in every county that you can at least see okay fine then tell us are these houses gonna be managed by the county government or the national government that is a way to explain to us what is actually going on but you just telling us to save what are we saving for how one bedroom in a car j exactly it's all leave content creator i wanted to start being a content creator so sauna 15 percent that is too much you know? <laughs> before before you before you because you're supposed to have been done by 9 30 so i'll come to paul then i'll go to mkoko i'll go to bravin then the letter back at me but probably went up to swell more maybe one of the curious easy the issue is always accountability, bro. To find you in your heart. Because she didn't see what you're doing. I'm a she didn't want to be shared. You look to deal now. Any goes on the side in the scale. Kimberly and I say, my the problem is accountability. We need leaders who are accountable. Now that we have them between now and 2027, this we're not going anywhere, my friend. I want to do a funny name. I'll come to you, Bravin, with you as well. But Paul. <laughs> okay. Um presuming i can be heard i continue yeah. so on tax yeah, yeah taxes are necessity uh pay your taxes it's not negotiable uh even if you subscribe to religion give caesar what is his that was from christ or if you know the social contract you are also obligated to pay the taxes to your sovereign that is non-negotiable which is why tax evasion is a problem so the 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 problem here comes with you know what your money does which is of course the theme and people have mentioned um content creators have been mentioned a lot so now let me be devil's advocate and argue for the government sasa because i think it's just fun so yeah so when people talk about withholding tax because eh? i've looked at the withholding uh tax thing 15 percent so this is this is important in my opinion i see value in it because you know our withholding tax is like um i have offered you a service and you are to pay me so instead of paying me the entire thing you give like a portion of me to care and say 
this is a portion that was supposed to be called money that you are here and that has two main benefits of course compliance and two when KRA are following up on taxes they know that this was a percentage of this person's money so when they come for my money even if I file nil returns or something inaccurate, they know that I at least made a certain sum of money at this time. So the withholding tax on on is was good. It's a good model so long as there is accountability. I think it can do a lot. But now on the content creator thing, I think maybe they still have to pay because you are using Kenyan resources to some extent to you know help you doing your content whatever. The broadband service in a way, in a way, I'm be touching someone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Yeah, but it's the same way, you know, these, these extra, extra, these companies that are big, you know, Amazon, they come to Kenya, they establish here, you know, they have to pay some kind of taxes because they are using Kenyan resources or land or something like that. So I think it's just a method of accountability. Now that can be debated. I did not open a Pandora's box. I just wanted to see how far I can push it. But yeah, I think okay. that's that. <laughs> well, you must no, we are in a very important discussion here. But someone, someone, someone knows that I'm a Chelsea fan, and you listen to a Chelsea in a trend that I say is in a Mumbai. Okay, and we're talking about Mumbai taxes. Omukoko. Yeah, as I said, I think uh, I'll try to be as brief as I can. Uh, there's always a reason as to why we should do something or as to why we should not do something. Uh, just briefly on the issue of content creators, they don't contribute to the economy in any meaningful way, except maybe when a phone's a to find a key to. But uh, making a YouTube video doesn't construct a road, doesn't add money to the... Okay, when you earn the money you spend it in Kenya, that helps. But that is true for every, every source of income. So I don't think there's any solid reason why we should not uh, tax content creators like any other person. But of course, we have difficult decisions to make. Uh, Kenya is in a terrible situation. Uh, the question is, how do we navigate these hard waters? And that is the question that the government needs to do. And my answer for this is that the government should be very intentional about proving to Kenya that they're accountable. People don't like taxes, especially when they don't trust that those taxes uh, will end up doing what they're supposed to do. And the best thing the government should do is to listen to the people uh, to involve the people and to ensure that their voices are heard. Now, I'm sure you can say that Zakaya is okay. It's not okay. I'm not sure if you're going to be there. I'm not sure if you're going to be there. I'm not sure if you're going to be there. So, so, Kimberly and Paul Kitui, I'll sacrifice you to go backstage so that you'll bring back Odugo and uh, Gilbert. I'm going to go back to the backstage. Gidogo. Uh, Tahila, you are one minute to uh, Na next time, Mukuji Mapema, because we were supposed to be a panelist with discussion on Nigeria, come to Malaysia. Tahila. Uh, first of all, Paul yeah. Mukuji, late. Uh, na something I had to deal with. So, first of all, the housing plan. I wanted to answer Kimberly about it. The housing plan is not a plan at all. Let nobody lie to you. The president is forcing it because he needs money. He has not found any way to make Kenyans pay, so he's looking for ways. And one of those ways is housing. He has no plans for housing. Let There are no plans for housing. I attended the press event. Ile Mr. Hinga was supposed to explain what the housing plan is. He wasted over two, he spent over two hours trying to explain a concept that did not exist. I am sure some of you have seen those two clips on the internet. This man had nothing to say, and he went on panels, and he said nothing. Mr. Hinga right now is in a very bad place, because he has, he, has, he has to explain to Kenyans something that does not exist. So uh, the housing plan is not a housing plan. Ninjia government could have to pesa na kuforce wa Kenya watu pesa. Hustler fund is also one of those ways. The government is acting like a loan, uh, like a bank, uh, mm -hmm. as a means to obtain, you know, cash and resources. So, Sahi Penyatuko, government is on trying to take from Kenyans mode because since independence, all the government has known is to how to is is how to milk from Kenyans. They don't know any other way of making revenue. Their parastatos are in distress. The government bought. 100% of telecom, they don't even know what to do with telecom. That could be a very 
major income earner for them, but they don't they can't they don't even know how to utilize their parastatus effectively. So let's just say Kenya to inchi because we are not in a good place. Kabisa, the leaders are stuck, the wananchi are, are are a minute step away from protesting and revolting. Nasi ku protest ile araila like proper protest and proper revolt. So tuombe vizuri. Um and I'm not an alarmist, I'm not trying to push uh, I'm not trying to throw alarm bells, it's just where the the country is. We have been a very peaceful people. We have been a very peaceful people, but who knows how long they can push that stick until you know how long they can poke us until we get to a point where we can't take it anymore. And to be honest, it feels as if that they are that they are trying to push the stick even further up, you know, to see mm-hmm. how far we can how far they can go before we react. So For the president to even have the audacity to say that Njugush and Butita earn more than him in salary, that is a <laughs> joke coming from a man who is as learned as he is. You know, it is a joke. So essentially, my my parting shot is to Ombe Hinchi because currently doesn't look like there's a way forward. Let's pray. <laughs> you one minute, brother. Chapa chapa kitukimaliza. We'll still create more sessions like this. Before you get your petition, I hope you also see Nokio Mtata may head to coach Leo, Mr. Fisher Imambo, uh, the savior of the nation. Eh? Gilbert, na limwambia live on his face, boss, hapa na hapa na hapa na ayo, na tanganyo, hapa na hapa na hapa, hii kitu yiko again is the bill of right. Now those are the kind of men who are needed in this country at this moment. Gilbert, go one minute. Yeah, uh, I'll be very quick. Um, my saying is that, my saying is very simple. Okay, uh, for me what I can say ni as a normal mwananchi, uh, kuna mwanya na ukweli. The people who are planning, and you want to do if they will implement or they will not implement. And if it's a fallacy, at the end of the day, time will bring the results. But my caution to my fellow Kenyans, ni tafadhali sai tumeona vile kuko. Next time, let's be very careful to kichagua viongozi. It's very simple. Sante. Okay. So we say my next time to kiambiwa kitawaramba to juwe kitawaramba. At juwe kila mba kitoko na sheza nacho. <laughs> Chairman Oduho. <laughs> Kitu kitaturamba. Kitu kitaturamba. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for the, um, the opportunity. Um, I mean, I believe I'm sitting with, uh, with great minds. Ongeza uh, sauti. Ongeza uh, sauti. Unanisikia? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, watch, 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 watch. So, um, uh, for, so for, for as long for as long as our politicians think uh, that we ought to tax ourselves to prosperity, uh, then I believe we shall tax ourselves to oblivion. Uh, fundamentally, fundamentally, <laughs> we 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 live in a democracy. And a democracy is a system of government in which decisions are made via consensus. That means w- w- the president is not a king. Therefore, he does, he does not decide. This matter is still to go to parliament. The matter shall be debated. And therein we shall see what, uh, then it shall be proven who are indeed the loyalists, as Brother Tehila had mentioned earlier. Um, it shall be, all this matter shall be revealed once the bill has been voted on and so approved, and where, whereby then we shall fundamentally understand if the case shall remain that our politicians think that we ought to attack to tax ourselves to oblivion, then indeed uh, we shall indeed, uh, I mean, th- this, this, this is truly the cause of mass uprisings anywhere in history and even today. And so, uh, however, however, ultimately a government must pay its bills. What we are fundamentally talking about here is how those bills are paid. And ultimately, uh, the reason as to why taxes must be paid is that it, is, it, it protects the social contract, the social contract commonly known as a constitution, whereby it determines how the resources of a state are distributed amongst its citizens and goes ahead to establish government whereby these decisions are made. Hence, it is up to uh, the legislators, uh, the, rather the legislators that were elected into government. And fundamentally, it will also prove that the very people who are complaining about the issue today are also part to blame. 
uh, this, I believe, should not be understated. Ultimately, we must not forget the role of international financial institutions. Austerity measures in regards to uh, uh, ensuring a nation can maintain its balance of payments, it means that the IMF has put stringent measures on additional borrowing, whereas the IMF and the World Bank are lenders of last resort. Ultimately, a government must pay its bills. A default is never a solution. And this is why, as we have seen in the US, the where, whereby we last minute to raise the debt ceiling. Then I will also answer, uh, re respond to Omukoko. The reason as to why the debt to GDP ratio between Kenya and, uh, and, uh, and the US is indeed, just as you mentioned, the issue of credit rating. But how does a nation reduce its risk, which is ultimately the fundamental di uh, dictator of the issue of credit rating? It is by, so the, the, the risk to be mitigated here is loss, uh, misappropriation of funds, isn't it? And this is ultimately comes back to what I mentioned earlier in the same statement. It is ultimately a management problem. And so we must look to ourselves really and understand that the change that we need is always five years away after the last time we had an opportunity uh, to make such a decision. And mm -hmm. that ultimately we must look at ourselves, the individuals seated here in this circle right now and those who have just left us. What percentage do we represent of the informed electorate? And fundamentally we find where the problem lies. Okay. Thank you. Like I said to Maliza and uh, Bravin, Bravin, um, I chose this because uh, I know we've been having these side conversations. And uh, Chairman, I think at some point, and even you, um, Mr. Mukoko, at some point, we really need to have a one on one with Bravin. <laughs> uh, I think there's some very good conversations that can be held here, just what he's so passionate about. But I know also on the is issue of accountability, because this is where the problem comes in. We go to election, you know, towards an election, hey, you know, we never knew who was who. So you say, the mean, it's a man who will. Kuna watu alikuwa na promise 6,000. Kuna watu alisema pia ratutua bottom up. Ratutua kuchini wa kutukuleka huku juu. Hadi tukaulizwa. Tuwanza na pale. Tukipanda huku. Pale, huku, pale. Tukasema ndio. Uja mamungina katuambia bana, there will be a 6,000 for you. We want to push um, uh, rural economy. And I think there's a new side the argument was, hey, can we try to deal with him and rural urban migration to tow him and Mingi town to the So, you know, as Kenyans, I took out in a Jew and Iwaki. So, at Jew, I come early funding in a bad repeat in the horses in the port in the lamb. What we, you know, that people are saying, you know, um, in the point the other guy and the horses in power, uh, can you get better? But who knows now that we are here? The issue of accountability, Bravin, is a very serious issue. So Brother, what can we do between now and the next time we turn in the election? Unmute, unmute. Yes, um, I think the issue of accountability is one of those things that uh, I've had so many conversations with even friends that are close to me about because when you talk about accountability it does not start by you just holding someone else accountable it starts by you holding yourself accountable first mm -hmm. um when we when, when we walk to uh to, to vote right like like let's let's say it's the voting day uh the general election that is uh what happens is that uh, most people especially if you look at this election so many people who are intelligent people who know what a leader should look like did not go to vote. They allowed people who vote because of Mtuetu syndrome to vote. But now, when we are talking about content creators being overtaxed, do you know most of the content creators are the people who did not go to vote? Just to me, the majority of them never voted. Uh, they just treated the day of the election as a holiday, and that is it. So, you know, they did not play their part of being an accountable citizen because not voting, yes, it's voting after after all but still at the end of the day you are not supposed to lament about the people you never chose uh, you see when we talk about um bad leaders uh, when you go to the ballot uh there there might be the bad leaders all of them are bad but among those bad leaders you have a track record you need to look at the track record of each and everyone there and look who is less who is 
less likely to be bad than the rest. If you look at one camp during the election, I always tell people I don't make political mistakes because I, I don't think I've ever voted in a way that I've regretted in my life. You see, when you go to, to vote, you need to look at the person you're going to vote for and the kind of people that surround that person. Birds of the same feathers flock together. If you look at the current government, even the appointments, you will have people who, are, who had cases in court, right? These are the people who have been given uh, positions of power. These are people who have had so many cases in court. Some of them, I don't know, they have scammed people, embezzled money here and there. And now they're the same people who have been given uh, the mandate to run the government. So if you look at this kind of people, are they the same people you can hold accountable? You already know these are people who are who are, have questionable character, but you have given them the position of power. Now, what is what's going to happen? They're going to eat. And when you see people are silent, trust you me, look at right now, even, even currently in government, look at the people who used to make too much noise during the political season right now they are very quiet they are not making any noise why are they not making noise it's because they are eating that's what they're doing when the mouth does not make noise it is eating so those people are eating where they are right now and you know you as a voter you want your money to be held like you you, you want accountability of your tax but the people you have voted for are people who are incompetent from the get-go what you need to do as a country, we need to make corruption a, a capital offense so that if someone is found and to be corrupt, that is, they are barred from ever holding any public office, they are sent to prison, and if they stole money, they pay double that amount that they, are, they, 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 they stole, that is, if they are found guilty. We need to take corruption seriously, because if you look at Kenya, it's on its knees because of corruption. Because, you see, we even budget for corruption. We go to read our budget, and we are budgeting for corruption. Oh, the, the three billion will disappear. Two, will, the two billion will disappear every day. We even budget for corruption. So you can imagine the state we are in. Yeah. So we need to, to look at corruption as one of the biggest problems that we have. And you see, right now, we also have some... I saw some other guy who was uh, pushing a bill to make um, gov to stop governors from being prosecuted when they have embezzled public funds. You know, I, I saw someone draft that bill that they're taking to parliament. You see, these are some of the people that someone woke up in the morning to go and vote for, to be to be in power. You see, now these are the kind of people that need to be sent back home and recalled. Now, people need to understand that there is a recall clause in the constitution. You have to recall such kinds of leaders because these are the same people who are going to make our life even more problematic. Then I had a few, I proposed a, so many solutions to some of the problems that we have in Kenya in terms of raising revenue. For example, if you look currently, uh, every government that comes in wants to start its own projects. You find that the previous government had some projects that they were not completed, but now they get abandoned and these ones want to start their own projects. They need to stop doing that. Stop these current projects. Finish all the other projects first before you keep moving to other projects. Stop any new projects. Finish the other ones. Then after that, you can move to other projects. Or else we are going to have projects that Kibaki started not mm -hmm. getting complete. The ones that Uhuru started not getting complete, then when the Hustler Nation is done, also the other ones come, they start their own, and these ones get stalled. And you know, they had already, already allocated funds. So those funds just get embezzled and they disappear like that. So that is that is one of the ways that they can do to, 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 to raise revenues. And also we have had this conversation so many times, the issue of legalizing something like marijuana, for example. You know, legalize it to pave way for scientific research, that is one, which it will help in terms of uh, treatment and research uh, purposes, and also for commercial purposes. You can export this, make money, instead of overtaxing citizens. Also, we have the issue of having 50 CSS. We do not need these people to occupy unconstitutional offices. Send these people home. They, we don't need them. In fact, they're not supposed to be there. Now, you, you are struggling to raise funds to pay people who are occupying positions that they shouldn't even be occupying in the first place. Already the court had, had ruled that. And even I know there's, there's still a case in court over the same, but I know these this, this, this positions they're holding, they're not supposed to be there. And we are spending billions in terms of salaries to these guys. Also, we have seen the president here is just him and, uh, and his deputy, we are seeing them having an increase in salary. They already, uh, there is a plan to increase their salaries and other allowances, that is. 
you see now if you raise this guy's salary and they are complaining there's no money and they are the people same people will tell you you need to pay taxes you know they need to also understand we are suffering they shouldn't be asking for more money they should work with what they have in fact i will i i, I once joked with a friend and i told this guy we need to fix the salaries of these people in the constitution so that if someone goes for the presidential seat they know this is what they will be paid they cannot change those salaries unless they call for a referendum because these guys just increase their salaries and MPs also. They need to understand these are the fixed salaries. This is what we are working with. You take this or you stay home. Let people who can take these salaries come to power and work for other people. If you can't take it, stay home. So that at least when we are working with the people, we know these are people who will work with what we have offered them, not people who will work with what they, they themselves can change anytime. Because currently, even if you want to change anything, uh, the executive has already got hold of the of the legislature. You cannot, they control the parliament. So it's like they are the puppets of the of the executive. The executive can have its way. That's why you are hearing the president saying things like, ah, nini wacheni buwana, di iki Twitter petition watu Like like they are talking with that kind of assurance that like you don't matter as a citizen. So it means that these are people who are operating on levels of state capture, if I may say, they have all the, everything they want, they can do whatever they want, you see. So I think there is too much, um, we have to do as citizens in terms of holding these leaders accountable, but we also need to hold ourselves accountable because we get the leaders we deserve. We wake up, you wake up to go to vote, the kind of leader that will come out of that ballot is the one you deserve because either way, you contributed to them being there. Either you voted, you did mm -hmm. not vote, you spoiled your vote, or you just never cared. And people need to understand, everything is politics everything you can never run away from politics i always hear people saying that um, me i don't like politics my friend everything is politics if you choose to wake up it's politics if you go to sleep at 9 a.m it is politics you have decided you have decided politics is about resource allocation and you know everything is about being allocated so if you as a person believe that you will at one point need resources then you have to engage in politics because it is politics everywhere and at every level. So people need to understand that politics is serious. And we as the youth, trust me right now, we, we are operating, if you go at Upper Hill, for example, right now, people have their, what do we call it? People are not getting their pensions because we don't have money. They are all the people who are suffering because there's no money. And if you look at uh, some allowances that people are getting uh, in parliament, they don't even deserve to get this. They should even cancel trips. You know, we are not even halfway the term of this uh, government, but we have um, politicians who have made over 10 trips overseas and they, they carry so many people with them, so many trips. And you know, these are trips that cost money. So they need to cut these trips, these trips down. Either they cut them down, peg them to a few number of trips or allow them to just have a meeting with those guys the way we are having a meeting here. After mm -hmm. all, it's all about discussing and sharing ideas. I don't have to see you for me to get the idea. As long as I hear you, we have a conversation. It's under a good uh, setup. I think that mm -hmm. should be uh, should be something they should work with. I think there is a lot we can do in terms of if they care about Kenya the way they want us to care so that we pay taxes, they should also know that they should cut down also how they, ex they, they, they spend. And the government needs to live within its means. We are we are we are overstretching in terms of telling people we are going to give you this, give you that, and they cannot afford. They need to live within their means. Tell people this is what is going to happen. Like budget with what you have. Don't don't budget with what you don't have. Because at the end of the day, you cannot do all these kinds of development at one go. Not a single president will move Kenya from a third world country, for example, to a first world country. Not a single president. It will take over time for you to even move that. Even if we give you so much money, you still can't do that in that short span. You need to understand that you need to do what you can afford to do, mm -hmm. and at the same time, live within your means. That's the only way we can definitely grow. Otherwise, we will keep suffering. But we need to treat these leaders and make sure that we hold them accountable um they should also as our voters we as the people we need to also hold ourselves accountable that's the only way we can build this country otherwise to tell me and and there is a huge problem you know before the election um someone when when i had that issue of a bottom up i told someone um when we were in high school in primary school that is 
when a teacher wanted to whip you, they would tell you, put your bottoms up. So when the government was coming, it was literally telling you, put your bottoms up, we want to whip you. This is what is going on. So we are going to face problems and get whipped until you understand what it means. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, thank you so much for that. I think where uh, we is the and before we even go, because I know to me, Peter Times, but uh, I saw in a certain group somewhere you people were saying, Oh, these are not something we can do within one hour. It is true, it can't be done within one hour. It is very true. Bravin, I know this is an ambush, but before to Malaysia, so to watch Leo, just one health tip. But your Bra Bravin is so good at this. Bravin knows how to advise people on maybe what to avoid, what to take, how to keep this, how to keep this. Bravin, you come to Russia, Kamoja Leo? Well, that's what I follow a lot for, from you, actually. You, you see, now when you tell me health, it becomes very big. I don't know if it's physical, mental, or uh, social. You can tell me what you want to do. a tip on health, mental, or um, physical. Gilbert, do you want a tip on mental or uh, physical? Uh, what's your excuse? A mental Leo. Mental, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mental, more than. Okay, so um, we all are candidates for a mental health um, illness or condition. That is the same way we all we all are candidates for any disability. It's the same way we are candidates for a mental health illness. And you know, most of the people do not understand that. Uh, mental everyone has mental health right uh the same way you mind about your physical health you work out you eat well etc you should be able to take care of your mind the same way so uh always make sure that uh, you take care of your mind the same way you take care of your body uh just make sure you have that mental gymnastics if i'm to say so if you feel that you're not okay try to take a walk try to um if I can say you can, what do you say? I do some yoga. Yoga will help you out uh, in terms of clearing your mind. You can take a walk. It's good for you. But at the same time, when you're going through something, normalize talking to someone. At least see a therapist if possible. Um, at least uh, if you cannot have anyone with you, Neza could link up with some. But at least try to let out what you're going through so that it does not. You know, now that Naona panel, men are the biggest, um, if I may say, we are, the, we are the leading in terms of the number of lives. Someone in the same way, to most men, their yeah. girlfriend are the therapist. Most of the problems are going to be in the same way. Uh, some of them do not have anyone, so I think uh, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> so uh, hey, I, 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 oh, uh, Kimberly and Asema Yuko. Oh, I go backstage, so I could not see her. Oh, so Kimberly, sorry, Sikwa ni mekuona apa because uko nyuma uko. So, um, what I was saying is. Uh, for everyone who is here, do not, by the way, you can talk to your girlfriend, even your pastor, anyone that can give you a listening ear. But at the same time, be mindful of whom you open up to. Because the other people you'll talk to, you'll talk to about your problems and they use it against you. Now, Kumbuka took you high school. I'm a, um, you know, I like to give real life examples. So, uh, <laughs> yes, took you high school. Kulukwanga na yule mwalimu. When you make a mistake and a kwambia, your mana baba yako alikuwa na kujia kwa shule kama amelewa, kwa yunyumbani kama amelewa kizumbuka. You see, there, there, there are those kinds of, of teachers. Ama unenda unaongea na guiding and counseling teacher who is also your mathematics teacher. So, wakati umongea na ee uko, akikuja kwa class and a kwambia, you see that you know there's some kind of scenarios and also that is a very huge conversation we were having about um, having your mathematics teacher as your guiding and counseling teacher it shouldn't be the case we have better avenues we are trying to work towards that so try to talk to anyone as long as they can give you a listening ear but we'll be mindful also at the same time whom you're talking to because some people will use your problems against you so a therapist is surely the best solution because they are you are protected by the um what can i say uh, their nature of work does not allow them to share your problems or share your issues with anyone the secrecy of it is guaranteed 
So talk to someone because wanaume wengi most I know Kimberly's jokes are most I know most of the men are here. So I'll uh, use the majority. Men are the ones who are undergoing uh, so many problems in terms of suicide. The now suicide cases in Kenya, men are the majority victims because there's so many factors and so much that men go through, but they do not talk about. So try to talk about it, work out, mm -hmm. and take care of your body the, the same way you take care of your um, physical health, take care of your mental health. That is all I can say as of now. Thank you. Asante sana. I think we should just create a session for this up with but uh, uh, ina uliza tu, but um, si lazimu ijibiwe, omukoku anashanga, mwono marafiki waki wengi wakipata pesa wanasahu mamba mental health. Si mental health ni kama inakuwa tu so much and broke people. Klafu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You see, uh, being financially, being financially, having financial constraints is one of the leading factors towards people developing depression, and depression can grow into into it can lead to suicide. That is so depression in Akuja when you have a financial crisis. That is so it's just one of the of those factors. So unapata the financial constraint. The moment unapata pesa, it can solve so many problems that you have. So you become less likely to have all those problems. But it does not mean you will not face a depression or any mental illness challenges. Because we have seen people who have money, people like Avicii, people, so many people who have died by suicide, yet they were rich. So it's not that when you have money, your problems are clear. Uh, even rich people have problems. They have so many problems. So it does not matter. Uh, the bracket you are in, whether una pesa, mahauna, maybe at, at this time, money is the problem. But utafika mbele, you discover that a relationship is the problem. Then ukisonga zaidi unagundua, eh, now there's so much problems that you do not even understand the origin, but you also need to see someone to explain. Because we have things like trauma, you might have an accident, lose your arm, you might have an accident, lose someone special in your life, it can cause that traumatic effect. So in as a kuzuia maisha yako and it is so it does not care about uh, the class and everyone has mental health as long as una kichwa, as long as you have a brain, you have mental health. So you just need to take care of of it as a whole so that you do not get uh, or if if you have a mental illness, you know how to cope with it. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think that was very important considering topic of the discuss up even affect our mental health. Um, especially Mambo taxes. But anyway, Santi San, we'll keep on to move this move this platform. So do us Santi San have a good night. Gilvers have a good night. Tehila Mukoko, um Bravin for Pale Backstage na Kinan Kuna Kimberley na Paul Muhisa and Bamenda. Thank you so much. Uh, hoping that we'll go keep on doing this again and again. Another talk will come back up. We're still on this issue of uh, um taxes. But I think Bravin will be hosting you very soon again on the issue of Imam Boya Health because in Atukula Sana, Kwa I panel, the Wanaume and the Motor in your cup, and everyone who has been watching, I think it is time to start talking about this thing. To see what it was a Gonjo, Jesus Mukoka, and I'll say, Mammy, you can't only check a check or two of you, you see, one of you could check a Kumini, Kumini, Shida. Anyway, good night, Kilamtu. Thank you, and uh, have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. Have a good one too. <laughs>